we're gonna have a creative chit chat with Hui Ying. We uh, decided to meet up somewhere on Starbucks in uh, Rochester Drive. It's a very hip area in Singapore, uh, somewhere in the west. Uh, fantastic place, quite quiet, um, quite lots of greens around. And uh, so, yeah, let's go and have a chat. Before we talk to her, let's look at some of the beautiful work that uh, Hui Ying has sent to me. Uh, these are some of the watercolor as well as oil work that she has uh, done over the years. Uh, they are just uh, beautiful and uh, stunning. Uh, I think uh, it will be a very interesting chat indeed uh, as we pick her brain around what she does. Good to see you. I, I wanted to interview you for a while. I know you've taken uh, the career of an art journey. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, we'll talk, get into that. So maybe first question, Hui, is uh, you tell us about yourself. Um, I'm Hui Ying. I, I'm trained in digital animation. But I've started Western art training since young, like 10 years old. I've been learning from one teacher who was uh, his training. He used to study in the old NAFA, so he's trained in the proper Western art system. So uh, we'll be, last time we do like, during secondary school we'll do oil painting, pencil sketch, still life. And then during school holidays we'll go outdoor for watercolour sketches. Right. Uh, so watercolour painting. Is that what triggers your love for the arts? Or? I think so. But earlier, I started with um, Mr. Yap at 10 years old. Before right. that, 4 years old is always children out all the way. Right. So I would right. say since young. Right. So tell us about what you do now. Uh, currently, I'm doing part-time art teaching, but I'm also still doing my part-time producer role at a local creative agency. Right. And that is uh, a freelancing or you have a uh, part-time job? Part-time. So I go in 3 days a week. Yeah, and um, you were also with a VFX company before, right? Tell us a little bit about that experience. How long were you there? Uh, actually, I was in both. Singapore has only two VFX studios. I was in both for briefly two years and two years. So right. Entire career of four years plus. Uh, it's, it's fun because it's my first job after seven years of animation studies. Right. So it's like the first venture into the career. And finally, you land in your dream job into like... Hollywood post-production, right. but I think that fine arts burning side starts to come out. Yeah. I, I, I feel that I do not want to do a, I do not want to stay in front of a computer for the rest of my life. Right. So right. that's when I, I told my supervisor that uh, I'll probably leave after the, like, my 10th, 10th movie. Yes. Right. And uh, I'm sure you learned something. What's your most favourite movie that you did? <laughs> Was that one? Probably Marvel. Marvel, which plus, one? Uh, the one I did was Thor, Thor the Dark World. Okay, I will yeah. put a <laughs> picture of that in here. Alright, yeah. very nice. Uh, so, uh, did you get a credit at the end? No, that one we did. Because, you're right, because sometimes a lot of shows, maybe out of 10 shows, you may be only credited for 4. I see. And some of it you may spend like 8 months on it. Some of it could be as short as just 2 months on right. one project. Right, right, right. right. So, um, maybe, well, thanks for that, right? Um, oh, a bit about your education background, your like... Uh, I started in NYP Animation, Digital Media Design, then straight away I moved on to NTU, School of Art, Design and Media. Right, So right. it's like non-stop seven years. Right. You did a master's? Mm, recently. Finish or...? Finish, finish. Right. But I, because of, uh, because of my schedule, so most of my friends finish within two years, I extended for another semester. I see. Yeah. But done. Congratulations. Done. 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 <laughs> and convocation is last August. Yeah, congrats, congrats. Okay, so let's talk about, we jump to motivation, right? Because I think that's always a, always an important part. Um, tell us about the journey and how you discover yourself, right? Your, your motivation for arts through the years. Like what is it now? What was it before? Has it changed? Mm, it becomes clearer, I think. So it has always been part of my daily lives since young seriously like right. because secondary school uh, secondary school I did all level art then primary school I've been uh, like I've, I already started the master art training then even so when we go animation is always intensive right. you go for life drawing you go for perspective you go for 3D animation 2D animation then until today it becomes clearer uh, maybe five years ago that I want to do things that keep me energetic and happy. 
Right. So my visual effects job uh, keeps me contented, but I don't feel that energy, like that burst of happiness when I'm in the job. So, right. So to me now, it's more sustaining that energy every day. Right. So what exactly do you do that gives you that energy? Is there some specific things? Mm. Like some completion, some satisfaction? Maybe, maybe even as small as um, going... It, it's not just on art. Because right. to me, I feel that sure. uh, life is art. Yeah. So, so part of a lot of things I do now is on food illustrations. Ah, okay. Those food illustrations uh, are not done uh, from references because it's not. I don't see them as a form of exercise. It's right. more of a, a record of my daily life. Right. Right. So, right. so a happiness can be like I. I mean, keep on passing a cafe that I, I, I want to go in right. or just a nice surrounding. It's not that you're exploring the world and right. exploring right. cafes and exploring food. Yeah. So, so to me, like for someone who enjoy food and enjoy like ha- having a slower life, so it's that kind is that happiness and yeah. energy. It doesn't really need to be like completing a massive work or all that motivation. I understand. Excellent. Um, and has that changed over the years? Mm, no, I don't think it has changed. It's more of um, I discovered that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. But life is a discovery anyway, right? Art is always about discovery. Um, maybe go to something simpler, your material. <laughs> do you want to show, what, what, what do you paint with today? I mean, I know you paint with a computer, but what, what else do you, you know, I, your favourite medium? Right, because I'm thinking after this, I'll probably go, go Sketching for, somewhere. Correct. So, this is a gift from a friend. So, to me, I tend to use uh, materials that people highly recommend. Right. So right, right, right. This is a gift, but I know Maybe bring it up to the camera. Oh. Uh, I see it. Ah, actually, yeah. Wow. So six colors. Yeah. No, twelve. So so for me, four. 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 Right from four tube colors. Four tubes. Ah, okay. Like the basic one, you can mix. Right, right, right. Then, but I also bring the small one around. Sometimes you need juicy colors. Yeah. Then, because usually four colors, you end up with more muted, earthy tones colors. Let me just do it. Yeah. And uh, any specific colors uh, that is your, or you don't really care, it's more hue or pigment. Does pigment matter to you? I think pigments matter only when uh, I'm doing a more full scale painting, like right. something big. Then for sketches, sketches, because sorry, we're for, talking about uh, pigments, yeah. Yeah, because like for me, when I bring out door, I usually go small. So, like, I'm using this is uh, Moskin. Right, Moleskine. Then, I know, usually people don't recommend skin watercolour for yeah. watercolour. They, 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 they are not the same anymore, it used to be very, very good. Then, but to me, it's a... Uh, this one is not... Uh, pigmentation doesn't really, like granulations, yeah. to me, it doesn't really matter that much. It's yeah. more of the... Uh, to me, I like the format. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Then, it does last really well. Because yeah. I have... I think I have like... Completed maybe seven or eight of these sketchbooks over the years. Yeah, you like the this format, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Then, uh, it's, it's, you know, sometimes when you want to do something kind of right, yeah. it's possible. So, then for this one, I think most of it is more of um, from last year to now. So a lot of them are, are maybe like uh, things that things that I bake at home. <laughs> you like baking. <laughs> Things I that like baking, yeah. Tap our home because now yeah, we, yeah. we don't dine out that much. Yeah. Then, or uh, there are periods where I remember phase three, we were doing a lot of staycation. So, to me, it's a record of the things that I've been doing for past. Yeah, lovely, yeah. Past two years. Yeah, so, so for me, I collect a lot of these and <laughs> yeah. I just slot them. It's more like a diary of your. Uh, yeah. Foodie experience. I think I think that's why when I created my Instagram, the first tender I think of is like a visual diary. Yeah. Because it is a diary, right? but it's made made out of uh, yeah. Yeah. this the latest butter chip. <laughs> 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 yes, you get a free uh, croissant. Correct. Yeah. yeah, excellent. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, so material watercolor. Uh, I guess you also paint with other medium. Do you? Mm. Uh, not so much oil, uh, acrylic. I do uh, not so much acrylic. So I do oils during my uh, BT Sunday class. Yeah. Then I brought this also recently. Recently, my friend recommended. So a lot is a recommendation. Right. Himi gouache. 
Ah oh, yes, I know about that one. Yeah, yeah it's, it's very popular. I'm so seeing everything. Good. Is it good? good? It's very good. The the only downside is it's it's too large a box for me. So I shared it with two other friends for one box, and I still can't finish within the two months. Right. Yeah. So to me, uh, materials matters. Like some of these are, uh, or oh, the initial ones, most of it are done with references. Right. Because I find it harder to bring it outdoors. When I go outdoors, I'll bring my watercolor. But the good thing about the wash is it's more similar to oil. Then it can you explore the different parts of like like because my master's is color theory, so yes. I was I was playing. I saw some of these on your Facebook, so yeah. Mm. Yep. Then and color. Some of it is uh, my recent art teaching. Yeah. Then the more detailed one comes from surprisingly when we pivoted online yeah. for, for the teaching because like somehow when when I paint mm. under the camera I tend to go super detailed and right. that's that's a good experience. Yeah, it, it is um, when you change the studio, your environment, mm. it impacts the output of your creation for sure. Okay. Definitely reflected on, on the things I've done like since COVID yeah. compared to pre COVID. Tell us about who you sketch with your membership, your kakis, your your uh, tribe. I think Do you have one or you use your yeah, more solo? Uh, depends on different things. Like food sketches are usually it tends to be more solo because if I'm exploring my own yeah. on the cafes then yeah, it will always be on my own. But for example if I uh, go for last time where we get to travel yeah, yeah. then if our I go trips. For, yes, our you trips. join us on a few that I organized. Yes, yes. Yeah. Then Ipoh. it will yeah. always be a group event where everyone like we may share the same yeah. food and everyone sketches so differently. Yeah and you learn from each other anyway, yeah. right? Um and is this particular um sketches artists that you specifically like globally or locally? Um, I think it, it becomes a bit uh, becomes a bit different these days with Pinterest and Instagram. Mm. It used to be, if you say local, it's always on Kim Seng if it's watercolor because it's the it's the one that we have the books. Yeah. So to me, masters is are the ones that like, before before Instagram age, before Pinterest age, right. where we were really hug the book for years and yeah. study the techniques just from the pages. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But these days I think um, everything because of technology, suddenly like uh, to me I, I see it as a different classification of styles. Yeah. So so to me, uh, like when I'm doing this watch, there may be a few artists online that use similar techniques. Yeah. Then to me I uh, I will save their pages as a few. But it could be people from Russia, it could be people from all over the world that I don't remember their yeah. names. But if I see their work, I can identify yeah, exactly. yeah, Everybody has a visual signature, right? Correct. Yeah. Um, and uh, I've seen your work, and between your gouache and your watercolour, the signature is actually a little bit different, mm, mm, mm. right? And I think because the material impact the way you yeah. produce, right? Yeah. So, yeah, um, I guess your your years of uh, taking classes and uh, now teaching, mm. right? Uh, I'm sure it will impact the, your output as well. Because as you're teaching, you're also learning, right? Correct. Like, um, because now I, I have uh, two students, she's like eight and nine years old. Right. It's very different. Yeah, they are different <laughs> and you also have to teach them differently. Yeah, so that's why recently I created my TikTok. Mm. So Just to engage with them. Because like the story of us, do you have TikTok? They, they don't even use Instagram anymore. Yeah. They are too young for <laughs> it's, it's, it's a new generation. Yeah. Every every generation has their own uh, favorite right uh, mm -hmm. social media. Uh, okay. So now tell us a little bit more about uh, you know, we covered material, we covered membership and uh, mind right. So maybe you have already done a little bit about that. But a uh, couple of things. One is how do you learn? And okay, we start with that, and then we will talk about. What are you working on right now? But mm. how do you learn? How, how do you wing as you? How how do you go about learning, uh, improving your your craft? To me, I think I'm quite fortunate that I've been learning quite systematically. So, like um, as I said, since young, my teacher trains us on a weekly basis. So every week there will be one exercise. Yeah. It could be a still life practice, a uh, charcoal practice on on like a sculpture. And then it can be like an outdoor painting. So so to me, it's a uh, training is about practice. So it's a discipline of going to class every week. Yeah. 
then um, for now it's more of um, I don't see myself as practicing or exercising anymore but when I think about it I am actually doing different forms of arts every day Great. because at work um, sometimes I do um, I still use my visual effects skills yep. you know, sometimes there, there may be smaller projects that requires the digital yep. painting skills and I still use my uh, animation training skills and digital background. So that's the work side yep. for the digital. Then for if I go for a cafe, then I'll, I'll still bring out my sketches in the morning. Then uh, because recent years I joined different art societies. Yep. Like uh, we, we just everyone just uh, headed for our deadline for watercolor society's uh, annual exhibition. So I painted like two half sheets last week. So, nice. so to me, these are uh, different, because of different activities, I will be producing different artwork. In, in a year, there will be many yeah. kinds, and at least there will be a few quality ones that could be exhibited. But you are always learning. In every piece that you work on, you are learning something new, right? Definitely. Either the material or the design, mm. or, right? Uh, is that something that you're working on right now? Like, are you trying to, for example, are you working mm. on shadows or, you know, something like, what, is there something like that or you're not quite uh, uh, just exploring your thematic food and so on? I think for techniques wise, maybe for bigger paintings I do, like um, recent ones, uh, I'm working on a quite quite a large piece of oil painting right. and I'm trying to use that theory of um, using complementary colours, opposite colours as a so so my uh, is a we call it so so it's a painting that is a uh, very lifted so it's like low contrast, everything is high key colours. Yep. Then um, because because like like my, my professor, my supervisor was Malam. So our theory is uh, for within the color wheel, so if you want to use more colors, you need to be tinted. So, so long you are at the higher side with more whites, you can actually manage one painting with like multiple hues yep. without clashing. Yep. Whereas if, if if it's not bright enough, it's not tinted enough, you try to use something more saturated, they will tend to clash each other. Right. So to me, I'm trying to bring that theory into practice. Right. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Mm. Uh, color theory is fantastically complex. Right. Complex. So, um, yeah, and it takes a lifetime of learning mm. basically to conquer color theory, right? Because to me, understanding a theory is just one side, yeah. but bringing it to practice and everyday practice. And then add it to your composition, mm. it's a different story altogether. Uh, last bit of my question is this, right? Uh, what your What is your schedule? Right? Do you have like a calendar or practice? Or, well, what does it look like today? To me, I think I try to. So back to the, just now we mentioned about the energy, yeah. I realised I, I do not like a static schedule. So the thing about my current schedule is, is fluid, uh, fluid in a way, but, so, but, but for example if I have classes, commitments, I'll still go, uh, I'll still teach on every Saturday morning, yeah. I'll still attend class on Sundays, those are the fixed ones, but uh, within the class itself, I don't do the same thing. Right. Like this, this week I'll be teaching watercolor to them. Yeah. Next week we'll be doing like an accurate landscape. Then following it, it could be a creative or a conceptual class. Right. So to me, that's um, that's like still we are still practicing, but trying to add in more things. And at the same time, I I would want anyone that I teach they are be able to be like me, be flexible yeah. with all mediums. Right, right. More all rounder, right? In mm. that sense. Uh. So you don't like to have a fixed schedule, you like the art, artist life of <laughs> I think so. That's you know, a, that's breaking a new, boundaries, right? New like, realization. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we all like that actually. We realize and actually to me art is a journey, right? It's about discovering yourself, right? Mm. Yeah. Last question uh, is if you have a chance of sending you a, yourself a postcard, say when you were 15. Or something. Mm. What would be the notes? And assuming because he has to travel through time, uh, you can only have one postcard, and you can only write three things. Uh, I say, what would those be? You know, one, two, three things. Uh, maybe just keep going. When I was fifteen. We were like series three, preparing for O level yeah. project art yeah. submission. So I remember series. That's why to me a lot are new realizations because I always feel that I'm a very structured student. Like although I 
do painting and do art since young. Yeah. I'm, I'm not the kind that I tell people that I want to be an artist, I'm creative, I want to break news. I'm, I'm never that kind. Yeah. But it's over the years I realized uh, what makes me happier and I'm, yeah, I'm less structured and I enjoy the fluidity. So, to me, if I keep write, going, that's what. If, if I want to write something for my fifteen year old, just keep going. You will, you will realize yourself more. Yeah. And technical things slowly, you will achieve what you want to achieve. Just, just need to keep. So don't worry, you will achieve correct, your correct. technical proficiency, right? Correct. Nice. Thank you very much. Okay, any last words for the uh, audience? Uh, <laughs> and you know, a lot of them know you, right, in Singapore. So, any, yeah. Uh, I think just keep keep sketching, keep doing art because I think definitely COVID has has bring a lot of differences yeah. for us in life. But like you say, just now I, f- I feel that when I bring myself back to studio, it is another self exploration and reflection. A lot of it's reflection because you are no longer outside uh, exchanging energy or conversations with. Because sometimes I feel that when you're outside in an environment, you're also uh, influenced by the environment yeah. itself, not just like a follow human being. Yeah, so, so keep practicing art, correct. keep doing it. Then even if it's at home, it's, it's the same. Thank you for your time. Thank, Thank you for sharing your thoughts. Yes. It's a pleasure. Bye. So what is this sketchbook? This one is a compiled of my uh, diary to Okinawa. So oh, I went to yeah, Okinawa yeah. in you 2016. Yeah. yeah. Because, like, like I said, I have many of these sketchbooks, but I chose to digitalize this one yep. and printed this. And because back then, Okinawa, there's no direct flights. Yeah. We have to go to Taipei. So I went to Taiwan for, like, uh, I didn't stay, but I went to the Starbucks for one night, then to the airport. Yep. So it's my first time in Okinawa, actually, first time in Japan. Right. And, but many people told me Okinawa is very different from mainland Japan. Yeah, yeah. It's like more more of Taiwan and uh, maybe America. This one is now is so memorable because Shuri Castle was burned down. Right. And, oh, yeah. I see. So there's a memory now. Correct. Then we even attended the Sunshine, <laughs> just a music workshop. Nice. So my first one was with a group of friends because um, all my ex colleagues, his wedding is at Okinawa. We oh, went, I see, lovely. Yeah, we went a lot of um, the traditional ones, the pottery studios. Right. And then that's, uh, I think, after that I went back to the same Airbnb host yep. where she always bring me to the pottery studio that she visited. So because recently I also picked up pottery. Ah, nice. So that's another one that's, mm, yeah. So, so like their kiln is like the different, the traditional ones. Right. And food wise, yeah. Love the food. I love Japanese food, yeah. It's, it's... Wow. So this is the Airbnb host. Yeah. Yeah, like a retired couple. And they like that actually, retired couple days. Mm. Ooh, yeah. And this so is their house. Yeah. yeah. So I, I painted something for right. them and I left it for them. Nice. So, so this is just one of like their simple cafes. So right. I think that's the... Okinawa to me is like a place where like an ideal idyllic place correct it's like it's lower it's a lot more natural scenes than but they are very specific and uh, even the small things that they use at home or in their cafes everything is, is, is so nicely selected and it's all thought through it's all thought through yeah. right there's a bit of zen in everything right correct yeah. it's, it's something that I feel that Singapore tend to we are a bit too fast paced or yeah we're, we're too a bit chin chai yeah simple simply so this one, like, yeah. I even oh, thank you for sharing it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, thank you. It's